What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Rick Savage. We are here at the world famous Capitol Studios. Uh, obviously, you can see that I'm joined by uh, Chino and Abe from the Deftones, Tim and Joe from Rise Against. <laughs> and, uh, and an audience that you can hear. Um, so we're going to do a couple questions. We'll chat a little. We'll take some questions online. And then uh, I think we have a few questions uh, from the folks here. So we're just going to hang out. Cool. Chat about right. the tour. Sounds good. If you don't know, well, if you're watching this, you know uh, that the bands are going on tour together. Deftones.com, Rizeagains.com for ticket info. It's going to be pretty uh, massive. Also, Thrice is opening. Yeah, Shout out to Thrice. Yeah. Such a great band. Yeah. Um, so let's start at the obvious. How did this tour come together? I think it's been in the making for a while. Yeah, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to take credit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I would we're say, excited. I would say so... I don't, I don't know when we met you guys, but it was, you know, at least, I don't know, like 10 years ago, maybe. A long time ago. Long, yeah, just playing shows and, and running into other festivals and that kind of thing. Um, and I would say that the last sentence of every time, single time we hung out with you guys was, we should tour together. That was kind yeah, of... Yeah, what's up, hey. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> what concluded every single interaction that I remember yeah. with you guys. And it was, and there's been a few close calls where we almost did it, you know, and just... It's hard for bands like us to all align, and this time it just all kind of aligned. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's. I mean, it's important. You know, we've both been at it a while you know, over the years, and it's just, uh, tour with a lot of great people, and it's always. It's about having fun. It's about having a nice. You know, we're obviously spending summer together, and, and um, you, you can pair people together and, and make it a. a, a uh, Tom <laughs> Fullery and, uh, and, <laughs> and, and just but, uh, but a, a good bunch of dudes, you know, hanging. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I was saying earlier, this is one of those shows that, like, I'm going to come early and stay late. Like, I want to see all three bands. This is like, right. and it all kind of strangely makes sense. Like, I don't know, I feel like Deftones always had kind of like, like a punk rock attitude about everything. And I feel like Rise Against is a band that can get heavier, but still is like a, you know, punk rock hardcore band. Um, so I don't know, uh, do you remember, like, the first time you heard these guys? Um, yeah, I was, I was getting this tattoo, actually. It's and awesome. It, yeah, yeah. Deftones playing in a tattoo yeah. parlor. <laughs> it was Deftones <laughs> playing in a tattoo parlor. Yeah. And it was, uh, and so it, it was, I was there for like four hours, so, and, and the guy was playing Deftones, uh, over and over and over. And it was like, and it was my, it was like the first time I'd really, like I'd heard some stuff here and there, but it was the first time I'd really like, was really. You couldn't leave, you were. I was trapped. <laughs> yeah, you were trapped. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Stop. <laughs> no, but like it was interesting because it's you know if you've gotten a tattoo, it's one of those sort of moments in your life where you're kind of just you're forced to kind of just sit there and yeah. you know your yeah. brain turns off and you're mm -hmm. just sort of digesting or consuming whatever is around you. And um, and I, the more I heard it, the more I loved it. And I remember getting back into the van, yeah, and I was like on a Deftones kick, and I was like, you guys got to hear this, like we got to yeah. listen to this, like. And, that, and then I, I basically put them in the tattoo parlor. <laughs> and, I was like, and that was kind of like, I just kind of, you know, turned the page and I was like, this is, this is cool as shit. This is a cool band. There's, yeah. and, there's, and there's so much more to the Deftones, I think, than anybody can really, than anybody at, at, at least had ever explained to me at that point. You know, there were many different, there were levels to it. There was different layers of it. And I, and I got that listening to that. And then I was able to just finally explore it more. And I've, you know, been a fan ever since. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember seeing them? Or yeah, them I remember time? hearing. I mean, the radio, these guys, the radio loves these guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, it's hard to not, them. like, yeah. to avoid it. It's like, I heard it, and I was like, well, but when I saw them live, that was like, you know, what got me. I was just like, you know, these dudes, like, they deliver live. It's very powerful. Sounds like the records, if not better. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they project. Their sound is very projective. And, um, and then I met them, obviously, and they're, you know, very down to earth, very nice Let's guys. Let's kick it. And, yeah. yeah, hung out like on just talking about music and, and, and that kind of stuff. I can sit and talk about music with, with people. Once when people like engage the music conversation, like I'm connected right there. It's yeah. like boom. You're in at yeah. that point. And um so yeah, these guys, I mean, you know, grew up obviously listening liking a lot of the same music and talking about music and having those conversations. Um but um I, what I thought was cool when this tour idea came up is the fact that, you know, although we, we do have some similarities in our in our sounds, I mean it's very because they come from very different places as well. Yeah. And, um, but they, I feel like they complement each other very well, you know. And I feel like sometimes when you do tours, that's which, that, that makes a tour a little more interesting at times, too. You go there and you get, you know. Also, you know, I think a lot of the, 
our fans and probably their fans as well that have probably heard of them but never really seen them live or right. they're their fans who have heard of us but maybe never seen us it's like there's an opportunity for to play for each other's fans and hopefully make new fans you know yeah do you guys think about that you know it's kind of a co-headlining tour are you uh you know if it was your own tour maybe you're going deeper in the vault on some things do you think about oh rise against fans mm -hmm. might know this record or or is it just kind of like going i mean i don't thing? think for us no not really we yeah. were very much like we write the set list a lot of times like Sometimes like an hour or a half hour before we play. Sometimes yeah, right? five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> um, and um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I think I feel pretty comfortable with like you know, with just like I feel like we can kind of just do what we do and do us. Um, we hope to play a lot of new music. Also, another thing too. I know it's kind of been a gripe from a lot of fans, but we. Sometimes we get predicts because we don't rehearse that much. I'll just be honest. <laughs> so like we, we you rehearse we, on the road. Yeah. So so like we don't know what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> so you know we hear we we have some songs that we know like no matter what we can play them decent. Sure. You know what I mean? We can right. play them well or well. Yeah. But or well. Yeah. Credit work. Yeah. Too. But but we uh but this time we are we do have a, a, a bit of rehearsal sort of lineup. So we're gonna actually work on songs that we've haven't played in a long time and some songs that we have never played so um yeah. and then also new you know new stuff too i i i know people are probably i'm happy because i, I like to play different stuff too yeah. i just want to make sure that it's deep it's good when yeah. we play it so now we got to rehearse i know yeah. Yeah. thanks a lot dude <laughs> precious on you yeah um yeah and same kind of thought process when you're making a set list for a, a, a tour like this or are you changing every day is it just kind of it's funny like? i was thinking about when you asked that question in our early days i remember we were like a, kind of a misfit band that didn't really fit in a lot of places. So we'd be opening up for Agnostic Front on one tour, mm -hmm. then opening up for a ska band the next tour. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and then getting thrown into like a radio festival or something like that. And b back in the day, I remember we would think about it. We'd be like, man, is there, like we're playing a ska show. Like, what yeah. about, how do we, how do we get, reach those fans? Or we're playing with yeah. Agnostic Front, yeah. like skinheads. How do yeah. we reach those fans? Yeah. You know? faster. Yeah. yeah. And you just go do it. I think. Yeah. You just go, yeah. Yeah. Just well, go do it. At, at yeah. the end of the day, the, at the end yeah. of the day, we're just like, you know, it's it factored in back then. But then we're like, you know, we just need to go play. Plus, you know, I think that uh, you got to give music fans credit, especially ones that come to Deftones shows and Rise Against shows. People are into all kinds of different music. Yeah. They don't want to hear your set catered to like yeah. the headlining band or the opening band I or whatever. They, they want. They came here to hear everything. They came here, too, they're going to love yeah. Thrice. They're going to love Deftones. They're going to love Rise Against. Like we all listen to all these bands. You know, yeah. when when we get off stage, we put on our radios. We listen to different music too. And so it's like people, they want to hear bands complement each other. You know, I think this tour, in a lot of ways, shows you how diverse rock is yeah you know like rock is kind of lumped in this category right where it's like we're not pop or we're not edm so we're just rock but it's yeah. like when like what what thrice does and what deftones do and what we do like it's it's all it's, it's way different and like fans appreciate that and i think that i see kids in our front row wearing deftones t-shirts you know always have you know yeah. so these are people who are you know you give the music thing credit that that people are into all kinds of all kinds of music. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, well, yeah, shout out to Thrice. Thanks for being a band again. That's yeah, nice. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they seem like a perfect, I was saying this earlier too, like they'll get super heavy at times, but they're like a SoCal punk rock band, so they have that like in their core. Mm -hmm. um, how did they get added to the to the? It's kind of another kind of, Yeah, it was like... <laughs> and kind of like, a, I mean, the timing was perfect, too. Like you said, they've been away for a while. And uh, we, we toured together with them years ago, twice, actually. Uh, once on a tour of our own, and then Taste of Chaos later. There was a oh, kind yeah. of thing. Uh, and But they are, like you said, they, they, um, they've they evolved into this really cool... You know, they have their their, their roots, too. But their their later records were, like, you know, got to be the really... They were deep, and they are yeah. sick. They are they're rad records to hear. They're just, they're cool guys, man, and... um. And of course, there's some twins in the band. So that's always nice. No, but uh, it's just it's just one of those things. I think the timing was perfect, like you said. Um, timing was perfect. They have a new record out, and shit, here we are. So, it's but um, yeah, it should be good, man. Nice, nice, well-rounded bunch of dudes. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah, dudes. And, and it was cool. It was just like there were guys that you guys know, and we've known for a long time yeah. too. Um, it was yeah. I remember when that came up. I think everyone was kind of like just greenlit it immediately. Like this is a great idea. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. Um, tour starts in Chicago. Mm -hmm. How's that feel? Is that ideal, or is that 
I just roll out of bed and drive to the venue. <laughs> <laughs> I think it adds... It, it always, sounds like, a great, it always yeah. sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I think anybody in a band, it's like, like a hometown show, is, you know, there's a, there's, it's, it can be stressful, but I think it'll be fun. It'll be a, a cool way to, uh, to kick it off, you know, and just like get that show like happening. Um, the venue there, I know you guys have played it too, is incredible. It looks out over Lake Michigan, the skyline's right behind you. Um, it's outdoors in the um, summertime in Chicago, which is like, the only time Chicago is kind of inhabitable. Yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. Uh, so I think it'll, it'll it'll be a cool like a cool epic night. Yeah, it's great. Do you do you notice as you're going across the country are there changes in in the shows? Do you feel a different energy from a Boston show to a by the time you get back to the West Coast for Phoenix or San Diego or some of these like I, I'm from San Diego and I always felt like San Diego was like a second Deftones home. I think I think the first time I saw you guys was like in ninety. Four or something down there. Somas and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like three somas ago. Yeah, yeah. That's way too <laughs> inside, but whatever. Um, yeah. Do you notice a, a difference in like the energy of the crowds? Certain, certain cities, cities have certain certain things, but I mean, you know, our fans are pretty versatile themselves. You know, in any in any one city, you know, yeah, it's crazy. You never look out there and see one type of person. It's like you see a lot of different people, age groups, everything. So, yeah. boys and girls, <laughs> men and women. It's um, awesome. So. Uh, I don't know. It's it's it's. I mean, it's. I'd say it's. You know, you go. You, you. I mean, obviously, you see different. I mean, you know, the the guest list is different in every city. You know sure. what I mean? You know, you're going to see certain people, or whatever. Um, but yeah, we we we're pretty lucky. We have great fans that are pretty, pretty cool. Pretty much everywhere. Yeah. You know. Well, speaking of the fans, transition. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we have some questions from uh, folks online, and then I think we're going to do a couple questions here in the room too. Um, I, we should just start with Deftones Diana. Um, <laughs> Deftones Diana, uh, Rock in Rio, Vegas, 2015. If you guys remember that, Tim came on stage, oh, did yeah. Passenger. That's right. That's right. So uh, Deftones Diana, with three very big heart emojis, <laughs> and hashtag Epic wants to know if that's going to happen on this tour, especially in Austin. Evidently, that's where she's from. <laughs> Will there be some Sounds like a request to me. That's, yeah. a, that's an gotta, early request. to find out. <laughs> probably, every, yeah, probably every single night. Yeah. Well, maybe not. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to come sing that part over every song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim's back again. And, yeah. and during our set. Yeah, get the wrong cue. Yeah, and during our set, too, yeah. It's like a big whack-a-mole Tim. Yeah. Yeah, like, Tim. yeah, we get it, dude. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rini Elizabeth. This is a pretty cool question. Uh, practical venue options aside, if you could play anywhere in the world, where would it be? Didn't you just play in a volcano or something? Uh, yeah, it wasn't like a, a real show. It was just me at playing right. acoustic guitar so if you guys which that was the scariest part of the whole thing because <laughs> i've i'm not i'm not i've never performed by myself really like it's just i'm very uncomfortable without these guys like making sure the, hey, buddy. the, the music behind me <laughs> <laughs> so surprises. that was mostly scared about that just like you know and um but the volcano experience was pretty neat i mean just like That's going right. that deep into the earth and um it was, yeah, but the scariest part was, like, the silence of everybody, like, sitting there waiting for me to entertain them yeah. with just a guitar, so. I mean, no, you know, nothing was mic'd up, so it was, like, the, just the actual ambience of the room. It's pretty cool, though. That's yeah. That's a cool... That's it was a neat, it was a neat experience, yeah. definitely. It speaks to how nerve-wracking playing acoustic by yourself is, too, when you're comparing it to an active volcano. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically... And I agree with you. Yeah. And I agree with you. It's like... It's like um, no, no volcano shows planned, I'm guessing. But well, if now you can that play, I've found out about this place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Anywhere no in the world you'd like to go and pop up and do a show? Oh, and the, and the question was practical venues. Aside, well, yeah, like you, you could know. literally like play almost yeah. anywhere. anywhere. Uh, I don't know the roof of this building. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there, there you go. go. Right. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll do, do that, that after. Ten okay. Minutes. We got ten minutes. We'll we'll do do that. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. That was not true at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Power to the people. Make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from Urban Journal, which I think is a, this is a really cool. It sounds like an organization out of St. Paul, Minnesota. But can you speak a bit to um, kind of uh, you know what inspires you, how you write? Um, it sounds like they're longtime fans. They they talk about songs in classes. It sounds like. Um, so, yeah, can you talk just about the writing process and, you know, n no spoilers, but I believe there might be new music on the horizon from you guys. So. Yeah, yeah, we are working on uh, new music, so we're hoping to have that out uh, real soon for people that we're pretty excited about. It's been, an, like, an interesting 
year to be an American, to be playing a punk rock band too, to be writing songs about that too. So people can definitely um, expect that. Uh, and then your question was the writing Just process. The process, yeah, uh, like the inspiration. It's really the process is probably the same as it was when we were like 16 years old. You know? Yeah, it's like this. It's a guitar, a bass on the end of your bed playing. Yeah, like to sort of distilling the world around you and whatever you are caring about at that moment and just kind of putting pen to paper and that's kind of how it still happens and I think that for musicians and bands and lyricists like your world is more complex than just the personal or the political you know what I mean right. it's it really is whatever is wherever whatever is most urgent at that moment you know when you're when you're when you're playing an instrument or whatever and so that process is still the same. Like, I think when you're a kid, and especially when you're younger, like, perhaps America's foreign policy is the most important thing to you at that moment. Sure. But then your girlfriend breaks up with you. Right. <laughs> and that's the most important thing to you at that yeah. moment. You know what I mean? So we're just, that's the human condition. We're all like, it's, there's, it's, it's complex. And so I guess, like, not that there's a lot of, there's not a goal to a Rise Against song or a record or anything, yeah. but, like, if the songs and the records can reflect, like, how complex we are as people and still talk about like uh, and still talk about the world around us you know yeah. we still talk about what I know that our fans crave um, to hear about you know how we're processing what's happening then then that's that's what we try to accomplish you know and that's yeah. kind of and then and then being kind of built around that yeah um, Gore was almost a year ago now huh hmm do you remember the, over here, yeah, yeah. the writing process of that, where, you, where your head was at? was it a year before that when we started that, yeah. yeah. Um, Do you think it takes that long? Is it about a year before uh, you? It takes us that long. Yeah. <laughs> but not, <laughs> not because we work really through the year. I mean, like, we're very, we work very leisurely. Like, I had sure. our leisure. Like, we all, another thing, too, is, like, we all live in, we're not like the 16-year-old kids who all live in the same neighborhood, like, that went into Stephens Garage and, yeah. you know, rode our skateboards over there and just started making music. We all have families and live apart from each other, so... We actually have to plan it very well for us to, every, you know, Sergio has to come from New York. I got to come from Morgan. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got to come, him and Frank come from Sacramento. Stefan lives here, but we usually work here. Um, and uh, we have to plan it out. So then we, yeah. we come in for these little, like, you know, 10 days sometimes, like little just writing sessions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and usually it's like no one comes in with any, like, preconceived ideas. You're not coming or, in with rough demos. Not really, that. no. Yeah. I mean... And that's kind of, I think, what keeps it fun because it's like we all get in a room together, we lock the door, and then we just start reacting to each other. Like someone yeah. starts making some noise, and then the other guy just starts doing something to that noise, and then yeah. we start building a song out of nothing. Yeah. And that's kind of what we did when we were young. But we just can't do that all the time. So we, so we, we kind of take our time, you know, and uh, so we can have an equal balance or somewhat of a home life and, yeah. and, and being in a room with 40 year old guys like you know <laughs> for like because we do like a, I think it's kind of cool we do like noon to usually six so it's like the closest thing that we've ever had to having a like a normal job you know yeah. you go into work at a certain time and you kind of lock the door behind you and you leave you know six hours later or whatever and hopefully you walk out of there with something you know um, from nothing and a lot of times what inspires that is each, is each other you know what I mean um exactly kind of like where we are at our times in that life. I mean, I always like to think of our records and even our songs as like sort of a, a snapshot of like where we were that day or, or that month or that week, whatever, in, in our lives. And usually in retrospect, you, like you listen to it, you know, months or years later and you kind of can remember that time. You can smell, you hear the song and you yeah. smell that moment of what it was like to be with, you know, it usually smells like weed. To keep it 100. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's what it, that's what it is. I mean, sure. it's, and it's, it's fun. It's still fun. Yeah. Like I mean, that's, as long as it's still fun. That's yeah. the point, right? Yeah. Um, we have questions here, I believe. Um, so yeah, let's do a couple of questions from folks here. Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? I guess we're all from probably L.A. in this room. But um, So my name is Nancy, and I uh, just want to say thank you so much for doing this. Big fan for a very, very long time. Um, I live here in L.A., but I'm originally from Fresno, California. Um, my question is, and hearing your guys' stories, you know, on how you put your music together, realizing that you both have um, 10 plus 15 years in, you know, doing music. So what are your thoughts? What are your feelings now looking back to where you are now and how you've grown as a band? So just kind of... Where are you feeling at now? Thank you. 
Good question. Nancy's my mom's name too, by the way. So, you know, <laughs> points. She's all right. So, I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. I mean, we were a band that started like in 1988, I guess, and, and it's no longer 1988. It's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, shit, it's 2017. But I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like at all that it's been that. Um, that it's been that long, you know, and it's gone quick, and it's there's definitely you know it's like proverbial roller coaster ride that people have, that have been doing this before us said, hey man, you can, you kind of hop on, and you never know, you know, it's um, it's got all these ups and downs, and and that's part of living life though too. Um, but to to put it, just to I mean, I'd look around and I I, I still love this dude, you know, we, we're we're brothers, man, and I, you know, we we laugh and and uh, and the rest of the dudes in the band. So just being, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. We just kind of just it's what we do though too, you know. And not, it's not much thought about it. It's just kind of what we do. Mm -hmm. I like you, man. You're all right. <laughs> I like you, too. Hey, buddy. Oh, my buddy. That was a sweet moment. My buddy. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy. Uh, that's a 1988 reference. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Should we do another question? Great. What's your name? Uh, my name's Steve. Steve. I am from Boston, but I've been living in L.A. 13 years. And thank you guys for doing this. Uh, my question is, how do you define failure, and what do you do to cope with it, avoid it, or um, combat it? Thank you. Great. Failure was a great band. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, we've all, I mean, all jokes aside, we've, all, we've, we've, done, we've failed a lot on the, in our journey. I mean, it's like we've had so many ups and downs, um, and it's, they're all been learning experiences, obviously. You know what I mean? It's hard to regret like a lot of the stuff that we went through because it's like, you know, it's cliche, but if we hadn't gone, you know, failed and gone through that stuff, whatever, you know, we'd be sitting in these chairs right now talking about this tour or whatever. So, um, how do you combat it? I don't know. I don't know. I think you just kind of accept it. it. You know what I mean? And, and try to overcome it, whatever. I may have failed to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> I may have, yeah, I think I just failed. <laughs> no, but your question. <laughs> Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, I think I put it really well. Like, I think about our band, um, you know, we started probably similar to you guys. We were a small band, and we yeah. grew, grew slowly. And eventually, we uh, became a bigger band and had more fans, and more people knew who we were. And I look back in our very early years, and I I think I'm so glad the spotlight didn't find us right away. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, we're yeah. you know very, I mean? in that same way, we're very lucky that, you know, yeah, that YouTube was not around, right? <laughs> right. Or even cell phones. About, all that. I think just, about the pressure on these young bands today. Yeah, yeah. You know, who are their first shows documented. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? They're, there's a lot of pressure on their first record, their first year of a band or a band that gets popular immediately yeah. because of a song, and it's like they're expected to, you know, have years of experience and be able to handle the crowds and the live and yeah. the touring and all that stuff. And we were allowed to actually be able to grow and learn as we went right. without. You know, it's yeah. a really special thing too. Yeah. Totally. We did what we did at our own pace, yeah. comfortable. Yeah. We did what we did out of like that harsh spotlight where by the time it found us, I feel like we were ready for it. Yeah. And, and by the time it found us, we had chalked up a lot of failures. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And everything from like messing up a show that night to a song you didn't love to, you know, just all the little things that, about being in a yeah. band, you know. And, and so those failures are important because by the time, you know, we were ready for that stage, you know, we'd already learned a lot. Yeah. Should we do another one? Do you have a question? Awesome. Angel. <laughs> Angel's no. What's up, fellas? Angel's name. Uh, Angel from the San Fernando Valley. Uh, this question is specifically for Chino. Uh, do blondes really have more fun? <laughs> Obviously not, because I'm back to my original. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, hey, uh, what are you guys listening to right now? Like, music. Question. Oh man, we did. I got asked that question about an hour ago, and I failed to yeah. to answer it. I was looking on my phone to see like what you know, whatever. But um, my mom, yeah. <laughs> Nancy, Nancy, yeah. Nancy, solo. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of, I'm kind of in a, one of those things where I just rant. It's always on random and uh, silence. I said, <laughs> I'm listening to a lot of silence. Yeah, not the band. <laughs> just, just silence. Anything you guys are listening to? Uh, I just discovered a band called Single Mothers. They're uh, from Canada. Uh, really good. Yeah. That that's kind of it for me. Yeah, Joe's always turning me on to, to new stuff, so I, I rely on him. I like a lot of the female fronted bands, like uh, yeah. White, Long, and Warm Women. 
um, yeah. right now, which I think is just powerful stuff that, you know, it's really cool to see, to see that happening. Yeah. Cool. Another question? Yes. Awesome. Hi. 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 Um, who or what was the first band or musician to blow your mind live uh, or on record? For me, Bad Brains. Yeah. Like, I was a 13-year-old kid. And I was scared hiding in the back of the room, the Vic Theater in Chicago. And they came on stage and blew me away. I mean, that's why I'm here. I just wanted to relive that and, you know, just relive that energy that they brought to the stage. So I was lucky enough to, to see it when they were, you know, still, still really great. Yeah. Word. <laughs> Tim, do you remember a, a first band that... Uh, Life-changing show probably was... Uh... Fugazi in Chicago at a uh, at a roller rink, the rainbow yeah. the rainbow roller rink. <laughs> so That's good. Awesome. Rest in peace. No longer there. Um, <laughs> but that was yeah. Just watching them, kind of, I don't know. It just changed my life. It was great shows too, huh? Mm. Yeah, yeah, just incredible. Yeah, they just they redefined what a yeah. show was. You know, you're watching a band with no set list, kind of organically flow through these songs and just yeah. they go to a different place and you know and they would have shows in unorthodox venues like a roller rink, you know, because yeah. they. They wanted one light, to, like one white yeah. light kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> like they wanted no to production. Totally. No yeah. production. They wanted to control who sold the tickets. It was always a five dollar ticket. Yeah. 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 Printed on like a piece of cardboard that somebody like silk screened. You know, you one had to time, go to um, one store to get it. one time and uh, Steph and I got to help load it load in. Oh we really? Did, we did the promoters. That's and awesome. we got like I was carrying like Ian's SG, you know, that old you know, beat this that old case and then his head. And I was like, and I got to sit at Brendan's drums. I'm like, oh shit. He came, you know, he came in later and put the bell up and shit. It was like <laughs> you did that? Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it was just one of those, like, hey, man, you guys, because we were trying to, you know, trying to get shows in town. We knew the promoters and right, stuff, right. and, you know, we're like these little kids kind of hanging around. Hey, uh, why don't you help bring some of your shit in? Right, so, right. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, amazing. pretty amazing, though. That is amazing. That's yeah. rad. Gina, do you remember the first kind of mind-blowing? Um, man, that's hard. Uh, probably listening to Casey and the Sunshine Band when I was, like, you know, four years old or something. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, like, the earliest music memories I have is, like, yeah. disco music, seriously. Not all, yes. Like no, I used to straight up dance to that. I used to get down to that. <laughs> but, um, I was just a little chinito. Though. But uh, like when I started to come of age and like, you know, like really like my own music, I, the first concert I went to, and this, I was probably pretty old for my first concert, but it was, um, it was Depeche Mode Violator Tour. Oh, and um, I was 16, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So that was pretty That's old hot. for the beat, you know, to go my, as my first concert. But it was like, the biggest thing in the world to see, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. and they're still probably one of my favorite bands, but to to see, like, you know, to be right in the front and just, like, see the massive production and, and just the performance and the songs just, like, coming out of the speakers were just, like, you know, I, I just, that was, like, my, I was, like, oh, that's what I want to do the rest of my life is just have something to do with music or whatever because it was very powerful. That's awesome. But also, like, you know, what Joe said, the bad, like, bad brains, like, I, I never saw them live back then, obviously, um, but just watching videos, like, there's something that's just, like, like insanely just, yeah. like, raw in the energy. And that's, like, that is what inspired me, I think, to be, like, to want to be a front man, at least, to, you know, and figure out how to sing because I wanted to do what he did. You know, <laughs> yeah. Or try. Awesome. Um, do we have one more? Is there another? Oh, great. We'll do the last one. Hi. Uh, my name is Nancy, or Star, too. <laughs> All right. Um, my first Deftone show was 21 years ago. And um, after all these shows, like, I'm wondering, is your motivation or your fuel behind your performances different now than it was before? It's, for me, it's the same. Yeah. I, just, I just, you know, stepping on and, and sitting down and just being very disrespectful to my drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but just smacking the shit out of the drums and go, but I mean, there's something that's still, I mean, going back to what I said earlier, there's been ups and all this stuff, but I mean, there's something about just, yeah. and we don't really have any ritual, you know, so, you know, we kind of, but we just, we get together for a minute, and we, you know, we, fuck, we just, but there's something about, you know, yeah. when you know you're about to hit it, and then. Yeah, I mean, my, honestly, my feel is always the music that, you know, that these guys are blaring out behind me, it's like, it's fuel to, uh, to just, like, go with it, you know what I mean, and, um, that's always what it is, so I was, like, talking about that thing the other day, uh, the, the volcano thing, which is, yeah. like, being so unnatural, because it's, like, I'm supposed to generate this kind of energy. Like I can't. I don't. That's not what I do. You know. What I mean. I, I react. I'm a very a reactionary person. When I hear something and, and I, I'm drawn to it, and then I can. To me, I like to react to that kind of stuff. So that they've always the music has always been the fuel, 
And no matter how I feel, like, on whatever day it may be, maybe it's not such a good day or whatever, it's usually, like, the minute we start playing, you know, the first 30, 45 seconds, it's like everything is just, like, you're just in it, you know? It's awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so we got two more uh, questions coming in. Um, uh, from One Shot Robot, Chino, have you had to change your scream technique over the years? Abe, how are you such a badass? <laughs> That was from me. Yeah. <laughs> was that you? That was you. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out. I don't know, man. Uh, no, I mean, I, 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 well, I always feel like I'm, I'm still always figuring things out. I'm not, I've never taken any vocal lessons or anything. Um, I pretty much just figured out how to sing just from singing along with records and singing along to them, the music they played. So it's kind of an orthodox way of doing, screaming or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'm still learning, I guess, whatever, but like, I don't feel like I'm, I really think about it too much. Like, I don't, like, think, I don't, like, try to plan different ways to do things. Um, kind of just, I've adapted what I've done over time. You know what I mean? And I'm sure it still changes a little bit here and there, whatever. Hopefully not for the worst, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, just, it's very reactionary as well. Cool. And uh, Joey Basarab, uh, will you guys be playing State of the Union this tour regarding the past presidential election? <laughs> Uh, also, uh, just so you guys know, I'll be attending 11 shows this tour starting in Chicago. So Shout out to Joe. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got 11 chances. So, can't, uh, <laughs> so you're saying I can't lie to him? No. <laughs> well, he'll, we'll, we, we, he'll we can submit out. the paperwork yeah. and see what, see what happens yeah, yeah. from corporate. It is, it is, and he brings up a good point, too. It's really, it's like uh, validating and depressing how relevant a song you wrote in 2006 during an entirely different administration can all of a sudden sort of become relevant again. You know, it, it, it lets you know, um, you know, that we live in a changing place that that demands people um, battle what confronts you, you know. So, but yeah, he, he, he hits a nail on the head. It's an important, yeah. an important song, one that, one that could be timely. Any advice? What do we do? How do we stay positive right now? I think it's a, I think it's a giant opportunity, that, to be honest. I think it's like, it's a, not only do I look at it as like a lot of what's happening uh, in the country today um, sort of like selfishly like validates what we've been thinking about for a long time. It's like these are things that we've always needed to watch out for. There are yeah. things that are not lost in the wake of history, but they are things that are always looking for opportunities to rear their ugly head the second you drop down your guard, you yeah. know? And so that's what what we've kind of talking about. And so there's an opportunity to learn here. There's an opportunity to, to see a divided country and to see and to try to recognize the forces that divide us and what their goals are in dividing us, um, and how a lot of us are a lot of us are the same people, um, but we allow these kind of fissures to get in between us. Um, and so, to be honest, I'm I'm more excited about it than depressed about it, because because I, I see people waking up. Yeah, you know, which is all that we've yeah. really tried to do for years talk about for and a while. talked about for a while. So it's like to actually yeah. see that process of awakening is is actually a beautiful thing. I like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good place to wrap up. We feel good? Everyone yeah, feel no, good? No, no. Um, Deftones.com, RiseAgainst.com. Uh, thanks to Live Nation. Thanks to Capitol Studios. Thanks to Thrice for joining this epic tour. Absolutely. I think it's going to be a pretty thank good you. summer. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you to you. Are we out? Or do we just awkwardly? <laughs>